Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and this cutie is Bean, and today we're going to be making a project coat rack for Bean. In Wisconsin, it's the winter months, and even Miss Bean needs a coat to stay warm on her winter walks. Thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. In just a minute, I'm going to cover the machine that I'm using along with today's project materials. Throughout this video, I am going to share with you different options of the machine and materials so that you can make this project your very own. And if making an animal themed project is not up your alley, I'll also show you some variations to make this a perfect project for you. Let's get started with the machine that I'll be using. And in today's video, I'm using the IKEA K1 Pro Max featuring a powerful laser watt module. This laser watt module is selectable between 24 watts and powerful 48 watt cutting action. The K1 Pro Max also includes a really nice air assist, and this is gonna be perfect for later on in the project when we start cutting materials. Underneath the K1 laser machine is the Atom Stack Shark Tooth Honeycomb. I call it Shark Tooth because all of these points here look like rows and rows of shark teeth. This is my preferred honeycomb to use, and don't worry, I'll have the proper name of this probably up in the corner of the screen. Moving on to the materials for this project, I am going to be using this piece of three quarter inch pine board, which this IKEA K1 Pro Max is not gonna have any problems cutting through. And for the embellishments that get glued down onto the surface, I'm going to be using this eighth inch hard board. When I'm ready to finish the project, I'm gonna to turn to my favorite spray paint and that is lac acrylic spray paint. This is really my go-to spray paint because it puts a nice even coat down. It's a bold, brilliant color, and it does a fantastic job of filling in all of the wood pores on porous wood, such as this pine board. Once the paint is dry or mostly dry, I'm going to join all the pieces together with some Gorilla Super Glue. Super strong and super fast drying. Next, I'm gonna spend a quick minute on reviewing some different options that you could use for both the machinery and the materials in this project. I realize that not everybody might have the IKEA Pro Max featuring this powerful laser module on it, but I would recommend using any quality laser diode machine that's at least 10 watts or higher. When I move on to materials, uh, I just want to cut this out using the laser because it can, and I think it's really cool. But if you have access to power tools, you can certainly cut this out into any shape that you would like. And if three quarter inch pine board isn't your thing and you don't have power tools to cut this out, go to any craft store and you can buy a board roughly about this size that's already pre-made and you can pick out any style and color that fits your personal taste. As mentioned, the other material I'm using for the embellishments is this eighth inch hardboard, and some 10 watt laser machines might have a hard time cutting through this. So as an option to move away from that material, I would recommend using some three millimeter or about an eighth inch bass plywood. The paint, I still recommend using the lac acrylic spray paint, while it does have an odor, it's not as bad as using something like an enamel spray paint, and this stuff dries much, much faster. Next, we're gonna jump into the computer, and I'm gonna share with you my two favorite places to find artwork for projects just like this. One of my favorite websites to go to for free graphics is pixabay.com. This is my go-to website when I'm looking for graphics that are for my personal use. These are for projects that I'm not going to be selling. When you download one of these images, just make sure that you have the proper license in place if you're going to be using your graphic to sell products. When I scroll back up, we'll see that I simply used the search word dog and I searched under vectors. 
I like to use vector files whenever possible because it allows me to both engrave or cut that file within the Lightburn software. This offers me the most flexibility when creating projects exactly like this. The second software site I'm going to share with you is a part of my Adobe software subscription plan. This is what I use when I'm doing commercial works because all of the works that I download from here include a commercial license. When we take a look in Lightburn, we're gonna see I've got a lot going on my screen. I'm actually going to work in reverse and start slowly removing things off of my project area and it's gonna help explain why I have things set up the way that I do. Let's check it out. My project consists of two layers. I have a blue layer here and I've got a cutout of a dog with a box around it and then two words, woof woof, with a cutout around that. The second layer is this red layer. I'm going to highlight this red layer and this red layer is going to be the cutout for the three quarter inch pine board. That's gonna be the back of the project material. I'll set this off to the side and I'm going to focus in more on just the dog. We'll see that the dog is two parts, the head and the body. And when I further simplify this, I'm gonna take the box around the dog and move that off to the side. I can certainly cut out the dog just like this. This dog again is gonna be cut out of this eighth inch hardboard. And one of the problems that I run into is when I go to glue this dog cutout onto the main board, it's getting the head aligned up to the body. I wanna make sure that they're just right and that the head's not tilted. And to make sure that things are perfectly aligned, I am going to cut those parts out inside of a box. That way, after this cuts out, I will have a template that I can place on top of the board and I can apply some glue to the dog's head and the body and place that inside of the template onto the board. That way I'm ensured perfect alignment. When I take a look at the words woof woof, the same principles are going to apply. If I take away this box, I'm left with all the individual letters and I'm gonna have some difficulties getting that perfect slant that I put in there along with the perfect spacing. With this box back around everything, I now have that template that I can place down on the board and of course apply glue to the backside of the letters and place all of those onto that main board, once again, ensuring I've got perfect alignment. With the blue layer explained, everything makes sense with that, and it'll make even more sense when we go to glue up the project a little bit later on in the video. I am going to move my red layer back in place here, and I have it set up like this, and I like to keep it all overlapped like this, and I have the blue border for the dog this height. It's the same height as the cutout that this board is going to be used. That way I can make sure that I have the dog is perfectly centered vertically on the board. And then I'm sure that it will be right justified that it will be aligned perfectly along the edge here. And I did the same thing with the words here on just the, uh, the left and the right inside of this Lightburn software. The height, I don't have that locked down because I wanna have some of that freedom when I'm gluing things up, but certainly if I wanted this to appear exactly right here, I can click on the box and I'll just stretch out that box until it reaches the top of what this main board would be. That way it's gonna be very easy to very consistently get this lined up. Lastly, below the wording woof woof, I left some space for some of the hardware hooks for this little mini coat rack. There's room for about two or three here. I'm also going to use one for the dog's tail. This looks good for my settings here for the blue layer for this hardboard. I'm using a speed of 12 millimeters per second at a power level of 95%. Only one pass is going to be needed. Moving on to the red layer, that is the cut layer for this three quarter inch pine board. I'm going to be running at four millimeters per second at a power level of 95%. This is going to take four passes. And one of the really neat things about the iCare Pro Max is it has a motorized Z axis that moves the laser module up and down. In between each pass, 
I have the software set up that this laser module is going to shift down one millimeter, further enhancing the cutting ability of this machine. I have this turned on by double clicking that layer. And here is the Z step per pass, one millimeter index per pass. And we'll see that later on as I'm cutting out the project. I'm now ready to start cutting out the materials. And because my project area in Lightburn software has both materials in the same area, when I cut out this eighth inch hardboard, I'm going to make sure that I have turned off the layer that's going to be for the three quarter inch pine board and vice versa. Once this is done being cut, I'm going to deactivate the blue layer that I use for this hardboard and I'm going to turn on the layer for the three quarter inch pine board. Everything's all set in the Lightburn software and all I need to do is cue in some nice relaxing music and show you a nice montage of the materials being cut out for today's project. The cutting is all complete and it took less than 20 minutes. The three quarter inch pine board took about 15 or 16 minutes with the eighth inch hardboard. Both of these pieces only taking about two to three minutes total. And that is all attributed to the iKear K1 Pro Max. The color scheme I'm going to be using for this project is going to be orange paint for the top surface black paint for the side and for the dog, and white paint for Woof Woof. I want to show you a closer look at how well the machine did the cutouts. Let's zoom in and check that out. Here's the dog cutout and the words. Then here's the edge of that three quarter inch pine board. It did chart just a little bit, but that's why I've got the LA's totally awesome out. I'm just going to saturate the side along here and that is going to clean up a lot of that charring so that the paint goes on nice and even. Before I start painting and gluing the rest of the project, I always like to do a dry mock-up. For this, I'm going to place the dog on the board here and from our light burn, we could see that all I have to do is line up the top and the bottom here, slide this over. That's the alignment I was looking for. Now I can place the dog parts inside the template here. And I'll do the same for Woof Woof. And I can move this up and down until I have the placement that I would like. And then when I'm ready, I can remove the templates off. And I'll do the same thing for the letters. And of course the letters are gonna stay behind because when I'm ready, these will be glued down. But we'll see, this is how I get the perfect alignment, all the spacing, the slant, all looks great. I like the way this looks, and I'm now ready to go out and get everything painted. I'll see you in a few minutes. Everything's all painted, and I'm now ready to do the glue up.
I'm going to give the glue a few minutes to do the final setup before attaching the hooks. After pre-drilling some mounting holes for the two hooks, I'm now ready to install the fasteners. This turned out absolutely perfect. I love the spacing of the lettering, the spacing and alignment of the two-part dog. The hooks look great, and I can't wait to put this in use.